Welcome to the amazing Snowdonia National Park. Tomorrow I'm running a workshop at the northern end of the park, but today I thought I'd visit this amazing, beautiful mountain lake here in the southern end of the park with the hope of capturing some landscape images. I've got my Fuji X-H2, my 5140, my 16-55 and the Viltrox 13mm in the bag. So I'm hopeful I've got all my bases covered and we can capture something special today. I think the weather conditions are going to be fairly changeable. Maybe there's going to be some light later on as the, as the light or the sun swings around there to the west. So let's go and see what we can find. So I took a little detour off the road, climbed this mound just to see what was at the top really. And I've been greeted with a wonderful panoramic view looking across this valley here. Absolutely stunning. We don't have a huge amount of light right now. It's quite flat. So I don't think it's going to work particularly well as a panorama unless something drastically changes, which it might do. Um, <laughs> so what I'm thinking is I might take an image up here because I've worked hard to get up here. I might grab the 50 to 140 lens, stick that on, see if I can come up with something intimate, a detailed shot. Some wonderful burgundies and greys in the hillside to my left there. Some beautiful green and grey brown tones to Cadet Idris, the mountain to my right. There's a boathouse down here on the left hand side. So I'm pretty confident I can pick something out here with a telephoto lens. So I'm going to get my gear unpacked, see what I can come up with. And you never know, maybe we'll get some light. I've actually got some light, which I'm quite surprised about. I wasn't expecting that. There's so much low cloud around. But I'm shooting this central mound, if you like, right in the middle of the valley. And there's a really nice stone wall that meanders its way around the hills, right to the top. That leads the eye right through the scene. And the light is coming from that side as well. So it's really accentuating the contours in the landscape. There's some sheep on the hillside too. And beyond that, the sky is dark and moody with blue hues to it as well, which I think works really well. There's a definite contrast between the two, between the light on the hillside and that dark, moody sky. I'm about 135 mil on the 5140 lens, 80th of a second f7.1 ISO 125. Super simple. I've got the 10 second timer on just to make sure there's no camera shake because this ground is quite spongy and you know with a telephoto lens when you're zoomed in quite tight any little movement can be accentuated i've got my ibis turned off as well because i've got the 10 second timer on and then i'm going to swing the camera around and see if i can get a shot looking back to the west of the little boathouse in the corner of that lake so loads to shoot up here could spend ages I'm just wandering around to this side of the hill because although I took a shot of the boathouse and I quite liked it because the light was great, there was a hill on this side of the lake which was kind of infringing into my composition if you like. So I'm going to come around this side of the hill, see if I can eliminate the, uh, the hill that was intruding into the composition, see if I can get a better angle on it, which I think I might be able to from here actually, which is quite nice. Oh yeah. This looks good. Right, let's see if I can get something set up here. Maybe that light will come back again. So that was all a little bit frantic and now I'm waiting, which is often the case, isn't it, when we're in the mountains, trying to get our light to be on our subject. It's quite difficult. We've got light out to the west. However, there's a hillside there, which I think might be blocking the light out now as that sun has dipped down, which is a bit of a pain. So I'm going to wait 10 minutes just to see what happens. And then I'm going to head down to the lakeside because I found a, an amazing stone wall that I think worked really well for my foreground composition. Maybe incorporate the boathouse and this mountain side on the left. See if we can get some nice calm reflections in the lake as well. That's kind of my thought process. It'd be great to get a sunset shot tonight. But yes, we will see. Another couple of minutes here, see if we can get some light on these hills, because really what I'm after is light on the foreground hills, shadow on the background hills, so we've got that contrast and textures. There is a little bit more light now, so uh, maybe, maybe something's going to happen. 
Hmm, maybe it is. Maybe I was wrong. <laughs> Let's hope we get a nice sunset. I think we managed to bag a couple of different, should I say, telephoto shots up there. But I'm keeping my fingers crossed for some nice light this evening. Before we get too far on down the trail, I just want to talk about the Fuji X-H2 a little bit because obviously I upgraded recently and I did a, you know, a few videos now on the image quality and the comparison between the old 26 megapixel sensor. And a few people have reached out to ask me whether I'm not happy with the X-H2. Well, I am, I'm absolutely thrilled to bits with it. It's been absolutely fantastic, to be honest. It does everything I need it to do. So yeah, just thought I'd put that out there. But I will be doing a separate video, of my complete thoughts on the X-H2 very soon. So look out for that one. But anyway, let's, let's get down here, see if we can find a composition for sunset. I found an amazing little composition here. These rocks in the foreground, some amazing light right, right now, which is absolutely fantastic. We're getting some great detail in the water, some beautiful reflections in the water, which is amazing. Compositionally, it's maybe a little bit unbalanced, but it's the only position where I can get the full reflection of the mountain and the island in the same shot from where I am. The further forward I go, I end up cutting off some of that mountain's reflection. I don't think it works as well. There is a big expanse of uh, just reflections here on the right hand side, but I'm hoping the angle of the reflection leads the eye through to the light on the island. I wasn't anticipating getting light on the island either. So that is absolutely 100% a bonus. That looks great right now, it really does. I wasn't, I wasn't expecting that at all. I kind of want to zoom in a little bit actually and see if I can get just a shot of the island on its own. I've got quite a few now of the wide angle scene. Um, right at 16 mil at the minute, sixth of a second F8. I think while the light is on the island and the hills on the background, I'm going to zoom in a bit and just get a shot of the island and the backdrop. I think that's what I'm going to do. And then I can revert back to this. I don't normally like changing my composition too much, but I think I need to do this right now. After the wide shot, the colours became so saturated and vivid, it felt like I was viewing the landscape on Velvia slide film. The following 10 minutes were a landscape photographer's dream conditions. So working as fast as I could, I set up for a pano and then a tighter shot of the island. As the sun dipped behind me, the reds became deeper and the sky faded to purple. I moved my position to the stone wall and made this photo of the boathouse. Finally, I switched back to my telephoto lens and took this shot, which turned out to be my favorite of the day. Let me know in the comments which you preferred. Well, I just love being here so much in the mountains, especially when you get these calm conditions with the light. It's absolutely incredible. If you're interested in checking out five photography techniques I use all of the time, check out this video over here. And until next week, where we'll be out shooting some more landscapes. Take care and I'll see you soon.